right, good morning. Today is Monday, the 5th of December, and I want to warn you all right now, I've got bronchitis, so if my voice goes, lecture will end. All right, as it says here, the uh, today, oh, it's the wrong one. Let me ring up the right one. There we go. All right. So today and tomorrow we're going to be going over doing some more work on our class database project and we're going to talk some more about SQL queries. All right. We should be able to conclude or finish up the database project by Wednesday at the latest, if not tomorrow. On Thursday, if you're not aware of this, um, about once or twice a month, they have a thing at Rankin that's called Shadow of Tech where students can come in and sit in a classroom. And even though it's basically just me talking to the computer, on Thursday, I've got a student who will be coming in, so I will be broadcasting actually from uh, Rankin itself with this student. And what I'm going to do during that time, I don't know how long this will take, but I'm going to give you a demo of what we're going to be covering in the class next semester. That being the AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies class. All right, that's the one that um, first year students will take in the spring 2023 semester. So there should be all of you, and I think there's been like two or three other ones that have added so far. All right, Friday will be our typical lab period. And I also put in here, please remember that first, the uh, database project part one requirements that I gave out last week are due this Wednesday, the 7th by midnight. If you don't have them or whatever, just email me and let me know. All right. There will be a part two requirements and it's not going to be very much. It really isn't. That's going to be due by the last day of class, technically or the second last day, 12, 14, 2022. And those requirements will be being emailed out to you by no later than Thursday and possibly earlier than that. All right. And the other thing, that I sent out to you this morning, just as an FYI, was this, and it's called non-key. Don't worry about what that means. But the idea is, um, the idea is we're gonna go over some more queries today and tomorrow, okay? All right, get rid of that. And let me just bring the project up. All right, so let's see. I wonder, I don't know if I kept this, probably didn't, but let's see. Oh, I did. So this is what we're going to be doing today. All right, what do I mean? Well, we're gonna, first of all, we're gonna talk about a few things. All right, I think we're gonna be able to take this and collapse this down quite a bit because right now it's pretty bad. I mean, this is a chunky, clunky interface. And we are going to change some stuff on it. What stuff? I'll be explaining that as we go on in here. All right, but you notice there's going to be another data grid view, and we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, okay. So let me bring up the project that we've been working on, the Garth project. In fact, before I do this, let me do one more thing. You can find it right now. There we go. Of course not. OK, file open. I think I know right where this is, so this won't take very long. There we go. So these are your requirements for the part of the project that is due this Wednesday. So I'll just even add that on here. Due Wednesday. 12 7 2022 20, by 11 59 59 p.m okay now i'm not going to resend that out my thought is that um i've talked about it enough and i put it up here that everybody will understand that and it's in every email all right so 
number part, number one on here said, show that you have successfully downloaded the SQL Server Management Studio on your machine by taking one or more associated screenshots. All right, on this right now, I have heard from about half of you, and some people have been having problems with this. So I wanted to show you quickly what I have loaded. Now, I thought, in a, apologize from the get-go, but I thought at the beginning of the semester, when we were setting up C Sharp, that one of the things we had downloaded was SQL Server. But you may or may not have it on your machine. I'm going to show you how you can find out in just a minute. But if you don't have it on your machine, all right, you can go right here. All I typed in was SQL Server 2019, and notice download SQL Server right there. All right, and that's going to take you to a Microsoft site. No, you don't have to pay $618 for it. It's free, so forget about that. So let's let's change that. And let's put in SQL Server download free. There we go, that looks better. That looks good. All right, so let me give you this URL. Okay, there it is. You don't need, of course, this stuff. So let me make it a little bigger so you can all read it well. Hopefully that'll be big enough. All right. So. Microsoft.com slash EN slash IN slash SQL hyphen server slash SQL hyphen server hyphen downloads. Now, how do you know whether or not you need this? <coughs> the easiest way for you to be able to tell is to click way down in the bottom left hand corner, click your Windows Start button, and go down here and start arrowing through and look and see if you have a Microsoft SQL Server 2019, if you have a 2019 folder. If you do, inside of that folder should be the SQL Server 2019. All right, if you don't have it, what you should do, I would recommend, don't grab any of these. Go down to Express, Download Now, and download that one. It is free. All right, now there are so many different ways of doing this that if you have any problems with it, let me know because some of you have already. All right, then after you get done with that, what you want to do next is you want to download SQL Server Management Studio. All right. And again, there should be a free one in here. All right, download SQL Server Management Studio. And let's see, it says to download preview. We don't want a preview one. Yeah. Redownload. That, that should be fine. 18.12.1 if you click right there. I'm not going to click it because then it'll grab everything. I've already got it downloaded on mine. How do you know whether that's on your machine or not? Again, click on your Windows Start button. And right underneath what I just showed you, which was Microsoft SQL Server 2019, you should have a folder that says Microsoft SQL Server Tools. 18. And if you click on that, notice the last second last thing in there, one of the last things in there says Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio 18. So again, I just told you how to do that. If you have problems, feel free to email me and I'll try to work with you. I've worked with two students on this over the weekend. All right, so I'll try to, you know, help you work on this as soon as possible. All right. So let's stop all that.
and let's get started. All right. So again, 10 points is showing me that you have successfully downloaded that. What would be a way that you could show me that you successfully downloaded it? Well, you could always, you know, come up here and you could open both of these. So you could come up here and you could open this one and you could open this one. All right, and then just take a screenshot, do print screen, bring up paint, just paste that in. That's part of it. The other thing, and we've talked about this before, so this shouldn't be any surprise to you, is if you come in here and you open up SQL Server Management Studio, actually this would suffice. So if you come up here and you open it up and you can show me the start screen that comes up right here in just a moment. That's got your information in here, not mine, but yours. That would suffice as well. All right, so that's 10 points of this. All right, next, add the code we've created in class. That's everything basically all right, everything basically through last Friday. The stuff we're going to start with today, I can't expect you to, you know, did I go over it on Monday and you can get it done on Wednesday? That's, I, I think, asking a little too much of you. So this will be part of what's due next week. All right. Mm -hmm. You should make sure that you go out and you add the database, call it like I've got it here, Garth DB. Add the albums table, add the song table, or songs table. Use the same field names I've given you and the same data, All right? So just bring it in. All right, as it says, you are also to try to, to bring in that Bureauk validator.cs class into the music library. I'm not showing you how to do that. All right, because I want, I want part of this to be just your works, something you can take pride in. All right, when you bring in that class, you feel free to add, if there isn't one in there already, add an is present method. If there's one in there, great. If there's not one in there, just add it. Add it to the class and just check and see if the name that you pass in, dot trim, is equal, equal, equal to double quote, double quote, meaning it's empty. Then you'll just print out a, me a message that says it's a required field. You may have to work with the tags property too, just so you know. So it's going to it's going to force you, for lack of better words, to go back and look at chapter twelve. Also, make sure that the album year is numeric, and make sure that the album year is between nineteen sixty two and twenty sixty two. I want you to do this in the same routine where currently we have been inserting a new album. So I want you to validate that before you insert a new album that this criteria has been met. Next, I'd like you to redesign the splash screen. Make it your own. That doesn't mean just take the splash screen I have and make it a different color background. Come on. Put in whatever you want. All right. Number four there says add extensive internal program documentation. As this is worth 20 points, I'm expecting anything where you would say, geez, do I need a comment here? Then you do. Upload a working copy of this to a new GitHub repo you create called DB Project and provide me an invite. Again, this has been changed now. It's not due here anymore. It's due Wednesday, 12, 7 says I will be checking GitHub throughout the day on Wednesday. Okay. All right. You will lose 10 points, 10 or 10% for every day late. Okay, we will continue with the project, that's today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to do a file, save as, and I'm going to call it updated hyphen 12 hyphen 5 hyphen 2022 
hyphen Garth Brooks database project requirements part one. And I'm going to save that. To the desktop. All right, next I'm going to quickly so I don't forget to do it. All right, I'll send the mail out later, but I'm going to say. Updated. Garth. Brooks. DB project. Part one requirements. Put me in there for now, just so I've got somebody in there. I'll add the class later. And I'm going to go to here, browse the computer. There's the updated. So there that is. All right. And as noted in the subject line above, thanks. OK, and I'll send that out in a little bit. All right, so that's the first thing. I think that's everything that's in here. OK, secondly, then let's go in and start talking about what we will want to do today. All right, right now, if I run this. Again, everything that I'm mentioning today, everything I'm mentioning tomorrow, anything I might still mention to finish up on Wednesday, this will be part of your part two database requirements that will be due Wednesday, the 14th of December. All right, so everything I just mentioned and I just went over it with you is what you put in part one. So I come to the main page here. I load my. I can't come in here and put in a new album. All right, and click it and it'll go in. I mean, I've done it and I played around with this a little bit. I don't want these, but that's fine. Just to show you, I'm going to put in here a new Garth Brooks. Album. The artist Garth. The year 2022, the description. This is a. Garth Brooks test album. And even though I don't know, I don't know if he's got one or not, but I'm going to put in here HTTPS colon slash slash www dot Garth Brooks. Dot com. OK, I click add new album. Notice the last one that's in here. Says this is a test. It doesn't say a new Garth Brooks album. I click add. It tells me that there was one to one added. If I go back and I reload my data. There it is a new Garth Brooks album Garth 2022. This is a new Garth Brooks album. And GarthBrooks.com. so that is working. There is a problem right now. Now I want to show you what the problem is. If I click one, boom, there's the album two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All works great until we get to the new albums. OK, then it busts because it's coming in here and it's looking for something that doesn't exist. And it's giving me an error right here. I'm going to ask that you try to fix that error. Now, you might not be able to, and if you can't, it's going to be OK. All right, but I'm going to ask that you at least attempt to fix that error. The easiest way to fix the error and what we might end up doing is just removing this picture. If we remove the picture, I can take some of this stuff that's here, move that down here, and then I can um, move this up because again, we're going to want to be adding some more stuff down here. All right. OK, so let's let's talk about what what else we want to do here. We're going to right now in just a moment, we're going to come in here and we're going to add another data grid view right here. And the idea is when I run the program. And I click. Load data and I click on album one. Not do I not only do I just want this. 
but down here in a separate in a separate grid view, what I want is um, I want all the songs that are in that particular album. And when I move to the next one, I want all the songs that are in that album, etc. And it's really and truly not that difficult to do. All right, what we're going to be doing here is working with two different tables, both tables we have in here, but we are not yet doing the join. All right, we're going to go through this and then I'm going to go through some programmatic examples with you. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down here. There's the end of my interface. And I'm going to stop the run. All right, and I'm going to go over to my toolbox. I'm going to grab another data grid view and I'm going to drag it right down here. All right. And we'll make it like this. It's bigger than we need, but that's OK. All right, and I'm immediately going to give this a name. Now I call the other data grid view that I had in here DGV albums. So this one I'm just going to call DGV for data grid view songs because they're going to be the songs that are on these albums. So DGV songs. Oops, don't want to capitalize. DGV songs okay now didn't break anything but we haven't put any code in yet so when we do run this you're going to see it here but it isn't doing a flaming thing so if i click on here and click on here now nothing happens down here that's what we want to change all right so that's what we're going to change in just a moment all right the first thing is if you remember here and again, I'm doing all these changes. Any change that I do, Monday, the 5th of December, Tuesday, the 6th of December, or Wednesday, the 7th of December, these will be part of the part two requirements for our database. The part two requirements for our database. All right, you don't have to do these by Wednesday. All right, so I've done all that. And remember, I've got an album class that I created in my music library. It's all fine. All right, but now I want to create another class in here. So I'm going to add a new class. And since this one's called album, I'll call this one song.cs, and it'll have everything for a song. So I'm immediately going to come in here, make this public. All right. And let's go back and take a look. I think I've got it up here somewhere. OK, so here's our albums, but here's our songs. So they ha it has to have these four fields in it. An album ID, a song number, a song name, and a song duration. OK, now I'm going to grab these. It's not going to. Go into here nice into here. I'm going to get errors, but don't worry about it. All right, we'll fix all this right now. So I'm going to come in here and say public. Int album ID. And I want to change this, of course, to a. Get set. OK. And int. And you'll notice now that one is fine. All right, then next I want to public int song number. And again, that will have a get and a set. Next, I will have a public string and that will be a song name. A get and a set. And finally, we will have a public string song duration and again that will have a get and a set so i can get rid of these now okay now before i say this because i am in just a moment again that is going to be represented here so there's the album id there's the song number there's the song name 
there's the duration. And there's 254 of these in the 15 albums. So we're talking an average of about, I don't know, 17 or so per album. And that's because one of these albums has got a whole boatload in there. Notice this album right here, album 11. And I don't remember what that's called, but you'll notice when we start working down, it has 80 songs in it. Most of them have about a dozen songs or so in them. Doesn't matter one way or the other. Totally fine. All right. So we've now come in and we've created this song class. So let me do a file. Save all. OK, and ideally, at least you'll notice there's a lot of similarities between the song and the album. Now, I could have made this call that ID like I call this ID. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. It will in the code I write, but technically it doesn't really matter one way or the other. All right, so we've come in and we have added our songs class. All right, so that's the first thing. OK, the next thing is now we're dealing with a different data grid view. And again, when we click on this and we click on an album, we want all the songs in that album to show right here. The reason I'm telling you that is we're going to go into our album DAO class that's right here. All right, we're going to go in there. And when you look in here, one of the things that we did, all right, as you start taking a look in here, again, one of the things that we did was we came in and we wrote routines, right? So we wrote a get all albums routine to get everything. Then we wrote a get search albums to just get one album. Then we wrote add new album so we could add a new album. So in just a couple minutes, we're going to write another one in here. And the one that we write in here, down on the end here, again, we could, of course, call it anything we wanted to call it, but I'm going to call it add song to albums table. All right, and that's actually it's not a good name. Maybe we'll change it. I don't really like that name, but it's fine. So these album images, we don't need to touch that. The splash screen, no, we don't need to touch that. We've already changed our main form. OK, so let's go into here. Now I'm in the FRM main form right now. One of the first things that we did was this. We came in here and we added a new. We added a new data source. OK, so we came in here. And I should say we added a new binding source. All right, so we said binding source, album binding source. Where is it? It's up here. So binding source, album binding source equal new binding source. That's what we use for lack of better words to, to be the glue between our actual data grid view and our programmatic statements. Well, we're going to need another one here, and that's going to be for our songs. So I'm going to start by saying binding source And I'll call this one, I'm calling them just what they are, song binding source. And again, I'll say that that is equal to a new binding source. Again, for lack of better words, this is going to be, going to be between our programmatic statements and the, um, the second data grid view, which we've just added. OK, so that's the first thing. All right. <clears throat> now, where do we put this stuff? All right. Literally, where do we want to put this stuff? OK, well, what we'll want to have happen is when you click this. After you've got the data loaded, after you click, when you click this, we want the information to show in here. When you click this and this fills up, you want we want to be able to click on an album number and have it show all the songs right in here. So in other words, we want it to be in here in its click event. 
All right, so let's see if we have anything right now for that click event. Menu item. Thought we did, but we might not, so let's go look. This was DGV albums. So let's look in here and see if we have that. There it is, DGV albums, sell click. OK, so right now this is doing the other stuff, not our new stuff that we're about to do. All right. This is the, the stuff that's coming in here, basically figuring out our row number, et cetera. That's all fine. I'm going to come down here. And the first thing that I'm going to do. All right, is I'm going to say albums. DAO. Albums. DAO equals new albums DAO. Okay. Now we have to let it know what routine we want it to call, and then we have to bind it to the associated grid view. Just so you know, I'm going to put this in. I'm going to get an error because I have not yet gone over to the albums DAO. file to write that routine. We will do that next. All right, so song binding data source dot data source equals albums DAO dot, and this will be called get songs for album. All right, and again, I'm getting that error because it hasn't been written yet. All right. Now the system will be confused because it does not know even where we want to get this from. That's not where we're getting the error. We're getting the error now because this hasn't been written. So just to show you, if I come back to our album DAO here and I come in and just I'm just going to do this just so you see it. I'm going to grab these just a couple lines here. In fact, I'll go all the way to here. It's going to give me a different error, but we'll fix that in just a second. Right. And I'm just going to say here, this will be a list of songs. And we will just say here, just so we don't hit, so it doesn't break. Return. This will be called songs to return. We're going to go over all of this in just a moment. There. All right. Now. We don't have any, well, we do have an error in there. So let's see, it says return list. This should say song. Okay, now the only, uh, we're gonna go through all this because there's more we have to add, but the point is this. This will also take in an integer and it'll be called album ID. All right, now when you look over here where we're calling it, okay, now, if we put in here the fact that what we want to pass in here is the album ID, well, you can't do this. It'd be nice if we could just do that. Now, notice we're not getting an error here anymore, but we're getting an error here because it the system has no idea what this means. It has no idea. So we've got to let it know. So let me remove this. I'm going to move down to a line, down a line because it's a little big. But I'm going to put it here DGV albums dot rows row clicked, which we just figured out up above. Excuse me. So row clicked dot cells zero dot value and guess what it's still going to give us an error and the problem is we have no guarantee this is going to hold an integer so what we're going to do is we're going to cast this as an integer 
and notice, lo and behold, there is no error now. So I've set up my songs binding source. So the only thing to do yet is to basically associate this with our data grid view. And it's the songs. Data grid view songs dot data source equals the song binding data source. Now in English, this is the whole routine. But let's talk about what's happening here. This stuff, everything from here through here, that was already there. That was already there. What I've added here were these lines. That's it. So we're creating a new instance of our album data access object class. In fact, this shouldn't be called albums. It should be called albums, D-A-O. Because mm -hmm. just to be consistent, that's what I've called it before. All right. And now what we're telling it is, hey, when we're working with this thing, we want you to call the get songs for album, which is that routine we just started to write. Get songs for album right there. All right. So we are doing the binding here. We're telling it what routine to call. And there we're actually binding it to the associated data grid view. Be real leery when you're running this and when you're going through this. That's the albums. Because that's the one we're clicking. These are the songs that are going to come out due to the one that we're clicking. All right, I'll leave that up there for a second. Feel free to do a screenshot, do whatever you want to do to put that out there. And then the only thing that will be left to do here, all right, is to actually go down and write that routine that we just talked about, all right? So we want to write that routine. So let me do a file, save all, and let me go back to right here. This get songs for, all right, we're going to write that right now. OK. Now, we want a list of songs. It'll be the songs to return. That's still correct. All right. And we want this. That's still correct. All that stuff is correct. All right, nothing new there. OK. Sorry about this. I'm going through my own notes here. There it is. OK. Well, I'm not sure where I put it. <laughs> All right. Well, I know I have it in the other one. If nothing else, I'll grab it from there. All righty. So give me a second here. I think it's in here. Get all the albums, get search album and new album. There it is. All right, get songs for album. I'm going to just grab every single flame and bit of it, copy it to the clipboard, come back to my program, and put it in here. Somehow I've removed accidentally a curly brace. So let me put this in here. Hopefully there'll be no errors. All right, that's okay. It's totally fine. We're going to fix all of this right now. 
All right. Should be songs and not song. And that's what's goofing this up. There we go. That's everything. Now let's go through it a line at a time, nice and slowly. Then we'll take a break. All right, so this is going to come in, not here, right here. Okay. I'll just put here. Display all. For this album. In separate data review. Because that's what we're doing. Now, we can call this whatever we want. I've got it called Get Songs for Album. Is that since I copied it over, is that what I called it over here? I want to check. And it is, it's get songs for album right there. All right, so let's look at this line by line. All right, so what we're saying here is we want to return a list of songs and we're passing in the current album ID. That's going to be the number that we click all right, to find what it is we're looking for. OK, the current album ID. So we start with an empty list that's called songs to return. We attempt to connect to our SQL server. Assuming we can not connect, we open our connection. Then it's not really that much. It's, it's very similar to what we had done earlier. As it says here, we have to define an SQL statement not to get all albums but to get all songs associated with the chosen album. All right. So we, we are creating a new command object there in line 138. We are setting the command text up in 139 and 140. So notice here's a where. All right, and it's saying where the album ID, that right there, this album ID is this album ID, I'm sorry, wrong one. This album ID that you see right here in our song class. All right. This at album ID, that is this. All right, then we set our connection. We've got our using statement in here, and what we're doing in here is we are filling up for each song in that album, we are filling it up. Notice there's an album ID, a song number, a song name, and a song duration. And again, album ID, song number, song name, and song duration. Int, int, string, string. So when I come back here, get int, get int, get string, get string. Then we add it to our list. And when we are all done in here, when we've gone through the whole while loop and we get out of the using, all right, we close our connection and we return it. So it's time to check and see whether or not this works. Okay, so let me do a file save all in here and let's run it. Okay, now when I click load data, and I go to album one. Notice what's in here now. All right, I've got the songs that are in album one. You'll notice they all have an ID of one, which they should. And it's songs one through ten. If I go to two. Now they all have an ID of two and it's songs one to ten. If I go all the way down to eleven. They're all eleven and again, you'll notice in here. There are like 81 songs or something like that, but they're all in there. So, big deal. It kind of is. What I've been able to show you in here is how we can come in and we can create, we can come in and we can 
load data from an existing database. We can query that data to get only what we're looking for. So again, in here, if I come in and I type in, I don't know, uh, the, I think we've done that before, and I click album search, now we've only got these. And if I choose one of these, again, the ones in the end won't work. That one won't work because there's no songs in there. All right, neither will 16. But if I go to here, Christmas together, there it is. All right, and I'm looking at this and this says pieces. And this says Christmas together. There's a problem in here someplace we're gonna have to look at. But this is 13 and you'll notice there's all the 13 songs. My guess is if we go back and load in all the data and I click 13, there's the Christmas together. So there's a disconnect here between this picture and what we're trying to put in here. All right. What we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to fix this up. I wanted to show you the code to actually be able to add something in here. I wanted to show you the code. We, we don't even have a delete in here. We could put a delete button in here and or in here. And if you clicked it, we could delete an album. Or if you clicked on here, we could delete a song. I don't want to do that because that th this is all correct, but we could. We could also set it up so you'd be able to click on this. Let's say you clicked on this one. You could bring up a form that would show you all that information where you could come in and change the song name or the song duration. This is very, very, very similar to what they showed in the book, just so you're aware of that. All right, so this is uh, basically this is where I wanted to get to today. All right, it is 855. I'm going to take five minutes, refresh my water here, <coughs> then come back and we're going to talk a little bit about database queries. All right, I hope the heck I've got this on. I hope I'm taping. Yeah, it looks like I am. So everything looks good. It is 8.55. I'll be back at 9 o'clock to continue on. Okay, give me a second.
Thump. All right, I am back and I'm going to close all this Garth stuff for today. All right, so let me grab this. It's running. And I'm going to do a file save all and close it. All right, now what I'd like to do next is hopefully you saw this, but um, let me go and fix my share. And that is, I sent you out an email today, and that email had in it, the second email I sent you, had this thing in here that has four files, actually five files. All right. And if we look at what's in here, because I'm going to do that right now, and uh, let's see, it's called non key. And like I said, there are five files in here, four files that you see right here, and one that's in the folder, okay? Now, what's in here is what we're gonna go over today. 
So today I'm going to go through this right here. Tomorrow I'm going to go through these two. Numbers one and two. Wednesday I'm going to go over number three. Now here's the good news. You don't have to do anything with these. You don't have to key them in. You don't have to do these exercises. I would prefer that you watch to see what I'm doing. If you want to try to do them, totally fine. You don't have to do them. You do, if you do them, you don't have to turn them in. They're not worth any points. But it's important that we have some closure here and we talk a little bit about databases and the different things that you can do with them. So this is what I'm going to do. Like I said, today, I'm going to go over this one. We should be done by 10 o'clock today. Tomorrow, we're going to look a little bit more at the guard stuff, but we're probably going to start tomorrow by going through these. All right. And if we can go through all three of them tomorrow, fine, but I, I this one's pretty big. Not many problems on it, but they're more very complex. Now, what am I going to do here? Well, let me bring this file up first. All right, I've got a new database that I've used in the past with students, and that database has eight tables in it. Hopefully you can see them all on your screen right now. I'm not going to read them off or anything to you. Hopefully one thing that you notice by looking at these tables, they are all connected either directly or indirectly with one another. So for instance, if I want something from this customer's table and I want something from this vendor's table, I can get it. But I have to go through customers. In fact, let's do it this way. We'll go vendors to product vendors to products to order details to orders to customers. Something along those lines. <laughs> OK, so what we're going to look at today are about, I don't remember how many problems are on this one. Looks like about 13. So we're going to go over 13 different problems. These 13 are actually pretty easy. They may not seem like it if you've never done this before. All right. But they're really and truly not difficult. So notice it says practice exercise not to be handed in. None of these are to be handed in. All right. Now I want to show you one more thing, and that is in this right here. In sales orders, there is a file called salesorders.sql. It has in there, there's the schema for all eight of the tables, and here's the data from all eight of the tables. They're literal total of 10,809 lines. I didn't create this. I grabbed this from a text that I used to use and modified it. All right, so why am I even showing you this? Well, we've got two things we can do here. We could either take this, take all this stuff and put it into SQL Server and work from there, or we could go and we could work right from PHP My Admin. And I've made the decision to do that. I've actually got two copies of this file, one that works with PHP My Admin and one that works with SQL Server. This is the one I sent you. This is the PHP My Admin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire file. Control A, Control C to copy. All right. Next, I'm going to come in and I'm going to start up. XAMP or XAMP, and it looks like it is running. Let's make sure let's stop it and we'll start it up again. So start Apache, turn green. There you go. Start MySQL, turn green. Good. Right next to the start and stop for MySQL, click the admin. All right, and now we're in here. Now, I'm going to show you the wrong way to do this. We could come in here and try to come into SQL and just paste all 10,000 lines in. It isn't going to work. The buffer that they put in here is of such a size that you, you can only put in so many lines of code. So what do we do? Well, we did do this. We went through an example of this earlier, but we're going to do it again right now. I'm going to click new on databases. And I'm going to come in and create a new database that I'm going to call sales orders. One word. All right, I'm using what's called Pascal casing here. 
So notice not only is the second word capitalized, but so is the first. All right, so I'm creating a new database called sales orders. It's not over here, but once I click create, <clears throat> there it is. In fact, it made it all lowercase, which is totally fine. It's totally fine. All right, now rather than bringing the stuff in this way, I'm going to click import. And I'm going to say find a file to import. Choose file. OK, I'm going to go into that non key table. My sales orders and there's the file. I'm going to click open. There it is. And now down here. I'm going to click import. Now there's 10,000 lines, so this isn't going to happen in like that. It says, please be patient. The file is being uploaded. Details about the upload are not available. All right, but literally it'll take. OK, it's done. So there we go. There's our. Eight tables. There's the categories table. There they are. We've got six categories. There's the customers table. And as you can see from in here, we have 27 customers. There's the employees table. We have eight employees. I believe that's all we have. Yep. Here is the. Products table. We've got 40 products. Here's the product vendors table, or how about here? There's the vendors table. We've got 10 vendors. All right, here's the product vendors table, which is lo looping those two together. And we've got 90 of those. Here's our orders. We have 944 orders. And the details for those orders, there are 3,975 of them. So we've got a pretty good database that we can use. The only thing I would tell you that I probably should have changed, and I guess I didn't, is under the orders, it still says 2019. I should have updated it to 2022. I didn't. Hey, everything's fine. All right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to use this database right here, and I want to run these, you know, so this again, this is the database right here. Database, that's what we just loaded in. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to come in and do these 12 questions. And it even says on here, answer each question below. Write each query in the best way possible. In other words, think before you do. Some may look a little weird, random or whatever, but we're going to do all of them anyway, okay? So what's the first thing that we want to do in here? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to insert three new customers into our customers table. Let's say that again. We want to insert three new customers into our customers table. There is Evan Gudmisted, there is Charles Corrigan, there is Jeff Scott. It says show how to add all three of these records to the customers table using one single insert query. So do all of these using just one query. All right, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at this. I want to come over to my customers table. And I'm going to go to structure. And you'll notice that the customer ID is an auto increment field. So in other words, we don't have to add that. All right, but for each one of us, we need to add a first name, a last name, an address, a city, a state, a zip code, an area code, and a phone number. All right, I've had people, because I've used this database before, who have asked me, why is the area code an int and the, the phone number of our chart? I don't know why they did it like that, but I just always just kept it the way it was. Probably I should have made that one field and just made it a var char of a certain size, but it's OK. All right, I think the reason for that is other than the primary key, there is no non numeric field or there's no numeric field in here. OK, so let's do this. So I'm going to come into my SQL right here and I'm going to put these in. So I'm going to put these in. So this is an insert command making this bigger so you can see it. I'm going to say insert into and the name of the table, which is customers. 
then I have to list all of the fields. Now, I don't want to come in here and say customer ID. I don't want to do that because that's an auto increment field. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab them all from here. So customer first name, comma, customer last name, comma. I don't want this to flow off the screen, so I'll keep going down here. Uh, customer street address, comma, customer city, comma, so that's so boom, customer state, customer zip, customer area code, and customer phone number. All right, so that's all the fields. I haven't put in the data yet, but I've let the system know what all the fields are. All right. So then I come over here and I type in values. All right, and I can have, let's put in here in the next line an open parenthesis, and then we'll move down a couple lines and I'm gonna put in here a closed parenthesis. All right, now I've got to put in my data right here. Okay, so the first one was Evan in single quotes, Evan Gudmisted. 4431 Finney Avenue, St. Louis. I think what I'll do is I'll move this. There we go. So you can we can see if we can put all of them on one or each record on one line. St. Louis, Missouri. 6311. Three, three, one, four, two, eight, six, forty, eight, forty, eight. Nope, two, eight, six, thirty, six, ninety, one. Okay, so that's all the information about Evan. And you notice my errors have gone away. That's good. All right, so that's done. Then the next one is Mr. Corrigan. So Charles Corrigan. Oh. He will be at 751 Par Road. That's in Wentzville, Missouri. Six three three eight five three one four, and his number is two eight six forty eight forty eight. Finally, there's me. OK, so that's everything. So let's again, let's break it down. Insert into the customers table these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fields. Customer first name, Evan, Charles or Jeff. Customer last name, Gunmisted Corrigan Scott. Customer street address, either 4431 Finney Avenue or 751 Par Road. Customer city, St. Louis or Wentzville. Customer state, Missouri and all three. Customer zip code, either 63113 or 63385. Customer area code, 314 each time, and then the respective phone numbers. If this works, there's two things we should be able to do then. All right, number one is we should see a message that says that the records were inserted, and then when we go back to the customers table, they should be in there. All right as three more customers. So let's run it by going down here. 
that'll work. Let me get smaller again. There's our go button. Now, if it ever comes up, if this ever comes up and it's red, that means I typed in something incorrectly. There we go. Well, like this. Column count doesn't match value count at row one. So let's look. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, it's the same as far as I can tell. Oh, I know what it is. Okay, it's on me because what we have to do, that's on me. Let me show you what the problem was. Each one of these has to be in their own set of parentheses. You have to follow the syntax. All right, so paren. Paren, and you'll notice the errors on the other two have already gone away, so. And paren. And fix that paren. That should be correct now. All right, so let's try running it again. I'm going to click go. And it tells me three rows were inserted. Well, now what can we do? Well, I don't need this query anymore, but I can say select star from customers. And now I should see those three new records in there along with everything else. Sometimes for whatever reason, this thing really slows down. So there we go. So, all right, how many customers do we have? 30, so we got to go to the second page here. And what you see there is Evan Gunmisted, Charles Corgan, and Jeff Scott added his three more customers. So that was the first one, okay? All right, if we go back to the first page, you'll notice that there's people from Washington in here. There's people from Oregon in here, California, and Texas. All right, now there's also people from Missouri. All right, so we just, because we just added them. The reason I'm telling you that is uh, number two on this. So problem two, we just did problem one. We just did this one. We just inserted those three records in, in one query. All right, now for number two, you've been asked to do further updates to the customers table. First, show the query to list each customer's current city, state, and zip code, but only, <coughs> only for those customers, only for those customers that are in one of these three cities, four cities, either in Austin or Palm Springs or San Diego or Seattle. Let's first talk about well, it's work, but let's talk about the way you wouldn't want to do it because it's too much work. But I'll do it the I'll do it the quote wrong way unquote, just to show you that it can be done. All right. So again, we want these four. All righty. So let's jump back into here and open up a new SQL window. So I want to say select star from customers, but I want to change my where condition. I can do this. I can say where customer city equal, and they were Austin. And then I can say or. I'm just going to grab this and copy it down a few times. Oh. So this is a way we can do it. This is going to work in just a second. And we want Austin or Palm Springs or San Diego. And this is case insensitive, so I could put everything in a lower case. It doesn't matter. Or Seattle. This is totally legit to do this. So what I'm showing you right now is totally legitimate. It should work. 
All right. So grab all this just so you see it and try to run it. And like I said, for some reason, there we go. So look at the cities. All right, we've got San Diego, we've got Seattle, we've got Austin, another San Diego, a Palm Springs, and another Seattle. All right. Okay, and that's fine. But what's a better way to write this then? Okay, we've already got that one in there. So let's talk about a better way. I want to see how much of this I can steal. Now I'm going to get an error here. Don't worry about it. We'll fix it in just a minute. Yeah, I'm going to just copy all of it, which is silly, but I'm going to do it like that anyway. Now, I don't know about you, but if you give me two different ways and tell me I can either type it in like this, which may have 100 characters in it, or I can type it in like this, which is probably more like 30 characters, I'll take this one. All right, now it's giving me the error because it says I've already got a query here, so let's remove the query we just did. And now the error goes away. <coughs> we got, I think, four or five records before. Let's see if we get the same thing now. All right, and it's only showing, well, that's interesting. It's only showing Austin and Palm Springs. So something is goofed up, but we'll fix it. Shouldn't matter. Oh, I didn't put a comma in there. That would goof it up. So let's run it again. We should get like a five records back. And there they are. I guess six, the same ones that we got returned previously. All right. So that's the second one. Or part one of the second one. All right. So what was next in here? Then showing the results of this query, make the following changes to the customers table, showing the four different update with four different update queries. Also tell how many records will be changed from all four queries. So I actually went out online and typed in Austin, Texas and found out one of the valid zip codes for that was 73301 and you can see the rest. I'm not gonna read them to you, all right? But I wanna do these update statements. Now, again, I'm gonna steal this. Just copy it right now and go back into here. Go to SQL, get rid of this. I'm going to put in this. It's going to give me some errors. I don't care. So I want to change Austin, Texas zip codes to 733901. How do I do that? Well, all of these are going to be the same. I'm going to say update customers. Update customers. Then I want to say set customer zip code equal 73301, and this is a character field, so it has to be within single quotes. Try that again, equal. 73301 where customer city equal Austin, just like that. So if you see what we have here, <coughs> update customers, okay. And we can say set 
the zip code equal to that where the customer city is equal to this. Now let's do this. All right, I'm going to save this, but let me cut it. And let me say select star from from customers where customer city is equal to Austin. Right, and let's run this. There's one, but notice it's 78710. So let's come back and see if we actually changed it. All right. Remember, it was now 78710 or something like that. All right, it says one record was affected, which it should be saying. So let me grab this. And let's run it. Try to. And notice it changed to 73301. All right, and I'm going to bring up and show you the other two quickly. So update customers, set customer zip code equal to, and Palm Springs was 92292, where the customer city is Palm Springs. And again, we will run this. And it says again, one row affected. We'll check them all out in just a second. So let me run it. the next one. All right, and that will be 91911. And that is where the is San Diego. And that hit two. And finally, let's do this one, which is 98117. And that is where the city is Seattle. Oh, and let's run it. Okay. And two rows were affected. So there should be a total of six that come up in here. So let's do this. Select star from customers in fact let's not select star yeah we will that's fine select star from customers where do the same query we ran before customer customer city in, and it was the four that we just looked at. So we need it in here, we need Austin. Just to show you that case sensitivity doesn't matter, there's uppercase, but let's put all this in all in uppercase. Let's put this all in lowercase. And let's mix it up in here. All right, and then let's run the query. And what does it say? It doesn't like something. Oh, I put a double quote in there. Or did I? Yep, I did. Instead of a single quote. Oh, I, that's not it. I did not in my parentheses. There we go. And you'll notice they've all been changed. Austin was changed to 73301. Palm Springs was changed to 929-92292. All right. San Diego was changed to 91911. And Seattle was changed to 98117. So they've all been changed. All right. So that is number two. Okay. Yeah.
Number three, show the query to you. You'll left join to search for any or all customers who do not have any orders. There should be three customers who have no orders. They should be Evan Gunmistead, Charles Corrigan, and Jeff Scott, because we just put them in. All right. Says if you did the query correctly, the only records that were probably returned were the three records you added in number one. That was the three of us, like I said. And any additional records if you want to play with them yourselves. Then it says using the results of this query, show the query to remove customer Jeff Scott from the table and show the query to do this. All right, so let's take a look. Here's these are, re, are references for you. All right, if you want to learn on how to do that in a little bit more depth and breadth of coverage. So this is going to be a little ugly. You've been warned. So the first thing I want to do. Is I want to make sure that I'm not going to repeat anything, so I'm going to do a select distinct in here and I'm going to concatenate the customer's first name. with a blank space with the customer last name. And I'm going to say here as customer name. All right, and then finally, This over, so we got it stuff lined up here. O dot order number. O dot order number as order number. Don't worry, it's all going to be fixed in a minute. From customers C. So we don't need that there. Join orders O <coughs> where is null O dot order number. Uh, it's pretty ugly. So let's break it down. There also is an error in here. So let's see if we can figure out what the error is. OK. It says an alias was previously found near O. See. Don't know why it's complaining there, so let's just open and go back. I was trying to give it an alias here, so instead of having to type in customers all the time, we could just type in C, but for some reason it doesn't appear like that. So let's fix each one of these. Oh, maybe that was it. I didn't have a comma there. That was it. OK, so let's go back and see if we can make them C, C, and O without any errors. There we go. Well, in English, this is saying exactly what I just said to you. So what I want you to do is I want you to show me unique customer names, concatenate together their first name, a blank space, and their last name, call the column customer name, all right, and show me their order numbers, but only, only where the order number is null, meaning there isn't one. This is an example of a non equa join. It's called a regular join. 
So it says, show me all the records from the first table, customers, but only the tables from the second. I'm sorry, show me all the records from the first table, customers, but only the records from the second table, orders. And then I gotta put the C back here and the O back here, or this won't work. All right. But only when there is no order for the customer. So again, this should show. I believe only Evan space Gudmus did. Charles space Corrigan and Jeff space Scott. I believe that's all it should show here. So it's telling me, let's see, and that's okay. This is how you learn. All right, you have an error in your syntax. Look for the right. Maybe is null. Maybe is null is two words, but I thought it was one word, but we'll check. Like that. See if that fixed it. It still didn't. to the right side of the where statement. Well, first thing to check is on our orders table, do we have something called order number? Oh, I don't see anything in here, so let's see. In fact, the, the best way to check this out, let me go back to my SQL window here. The best way to check this out is to come back here and look at this. So orders does have an order number. All right, so we're trying to combine information from this table with this table. So let's see if we can figure out what happened. I don't think that was complete here, so let's type it in again. I wish I had saved that, and I probably, no, I didn't. So a select, distinct, concat, C dot customer, first name, plus a blank space, C dot cust, customer, Last name. As. Customer name. Comma. Then the other one. Which was. O dot. Order number. As. Order. Number. Oh. On C dot, oops, wait a minute, from customers C, customers C, orders O, Give me that garbage. I don't want it. From customer C orders O. On. C dot customer ID. Equals O dot customer ID. Did I make that an O? What's wrong with this? This was previously found. I had the same problem before. Well, I'm just, I don't want to waste any more of your time with this. So customers. Customers. Orders. On customer ID, on.
orders. Customer ID. Where is null? Orders dot order number. All right, now I'm going to copy all this just in case because I probably have screwed it up already. So that's a copy. Unexpected token near equal sign. Customers. I didn't tell it to do the join. Go. There you go. So again, this is saying go through both tables. Only show me where there is a record in the customers table where there is not a matching record in the orders table. So again, if we did this right, it should show me, Evan, and Charles. And it's saying unknown column in orders table. All right, then let's fix that. Orders has customer ID in it. it. Has order ID in it. Let's look at the structure of the orders table. There is not an order number in there. I don't know why, but there isn't. It should be order ID. That's the order number. OK, not a problem. All right, so we've got order number here. That should be order ID. So should that. I think that's correct. All right, so you'll notice all these nulls, which says to me I didn't set it up right, but that's okay. All right. And everybody is in here as null. Well, so it's saying all these people don't have order numbers. so. I did something wrong. Let's go back and look at it again. What's in the orders table? Let's look at that first of all. What's in this orders table? Orders table. Yeah, I can. That's okay. All right. Well, let's see if we can make a change to this and make this work. All right, don't know if that'll fix it or not. I might might have just made it worse. I don't know. And I did. Boom. Shouldn't be that hard. Okay, these are still all showing null. Not proving a whole heck of a lot here to you, am I? I'm going to try one more thing. I like that. don't know if that's right or not. Nope, it doesn't like that. So it wants is null as one word. So I want to join these two tables on that field.
Well, I'm not sure what the problem is. And I don't want to waste your time. All right. Let's first talk. Let's just talk in here about how about this? How about select star from customers where customer first name equals Jeff and customer last name equals Scott. Let's just see what that gives us. And there I am. And you'll notice my customer ID there is 30, which is fine. Because a better way of writing that would have been where customer ID equal 30, just in case there's more than one Jeff Scott in this database, gives me the same information. So to remove this one now, I, I'm gonna say, delete from customers where customers where customer id equal 30 that should remove me delete from customers where customer id equal 30 says do you really want to execute that command yes i do so now if I come through here and I select star from customers, what you should notice, two things. First, okay, there's my 25. <clears throat> I'm out of here. Second, if I do come in and do another insert, and let's look in here, on the customers all of these can be null see that they can all be null that means the nulls are acceptable so let me add a new customer and i'm only going to put in a first name and a last name so insert into customers customer first name customer last name values and i'm going to put just one in there OK, so I'm going to put in here. Mary. Doe. That should work. And it says she was put in there. Notice she was put in at 31. So that's the other thing I wanted to show you here. So if I select star from customers and do my go. And I go to the second page. Now, ID 30 has been lost. Now, could we still force her to be 30? We could. That's considered a really poor policy. Since we had auto increment, technically 30 is gone. And you'll notice since I didn't fill in a street address, city, state, or zip. All right. And the phone number stuff as well. They're all null. All right. We continue on. Show an alter table command to add a new field to the end of the employee table. All right, if you go out to that URL, you can find out how to do that. We want to add a hired date in there. All right, to the employees table, and we've only got eight employees. All right, now one thing is it's considered very poor practice that after you have data in a table already, to go in and add new fields. You might be better off dropping the existing table and recreating it with the new fields, all right? But let's take a look at it anyway, all right? So, command is alter table. What table do I want to alter? The employees table. And what do I want to do? I want to add, and I want to add a new field called emp 
we'll call this, we'll do it this way. Um, employees, heck, we'll just add, we'll do it like this. We'll add, we'll do it, emp, hire date, and it'll be of type date. Okay, and I'm gonna tell it to add that. And it worked. Now, what did we just do? It's easier to show you. Select star from employees. And you'll notice that now when we do this, every employee now has a higher date field. Right there. So that's what we did by altering the table. Let's just change one of these. The first person in here is Ann Patterson, so we'll change hers. All right, you're told in here to change all eight of them. We don't have to do that. I think one is sufficient to show it to you. So to change this one, we can run update employees. Set emp hire date equal 20. 10 dash 09 dash 21. All right. Where employee ID equals, I don't know what that was. I think it's 701, but we'll find out. 701. All right. So let's see if that did anything. No, it says table because I spelled it wrong. Try that again. All right, it says zero rows affected. What does that mean? It means there was nothing that met this criteria. What does that mean? Well, the easiest way to show you is this should have been a one instead of a 701, but let's copy this and let's just say select star from employees and let's run that query and you'll notice that the employee id for ann patterson is one so all i have to do is go back here and change that to this uh, i don't need that select in there anymore so get rid of that just like that Okay, now if I really wanted to be sure, I could put in here and imp employee first name equals an and employee last name equals Patterson. Okay. That, you know, so they would, this would all have to be true. The, this would have to be the ID. This would have to be the first name. This would have to be the last name. All right. So I'm going to try to update it and set that date. Let's see if this works. It says one row affected, which is always a good thing. Oh. If I select star from employees now, let's run that. And just for Ann Patterson, she now has a higher date. Okay. All right. Next, I'm going to go through six and I'm going to take another break. Great a query that shows each employee's first name, last name, hire date, and the number of days they've been employed. MySQL has a built in. CUR date for current date function. Okay, it's really not a hard query. Okay, but what you have to do is you have to subtract the current date from the current date. You have to subtract the higher date. If you say, I don't know what you mean, watch the query. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say select. 
the employee first name as this is giving it a, a, an alias, so we'll just call it first name. The employee last name. We'll call that one last name. And the employee hire date. All right, plus we want one more field. And that is this date diff. And we want to subtract from the CUR date. We want to subtract from there the date they were hired. And we'll call that one as number of days employed. from employees. Now, just in case I screwed up the query any place, copy that to the clipboard so I can always go back to it if I need to. And there you go. Now, the only one we have in here is Ann Patterson because we didn't change the dates for the other ones. So what that says is there have been 4,458 days between September 21st, 2010, and December 5th, 2022. Okay. All right. So that was number five. Or number six. Well, we can do this one. It says show the number between the, the smallest and largest hire. Let's let's go back and do this. I'm gonna go and add, I'm gonna go and add the uh Higher dates for all the employees, just so it'll make a little bit more sense. OK, so let me go back to here. Like I said, we'll take a break after this one. Oh, that should do the second employee, unless I made a mistake, and hopefully I didn't. And then we'll do the third one. Fourth one, oh, crud or gutters. Oh, I should have left it in there, I guess. There's a thing here that says retain query box. I'm going to keep that in checked. So select, I'm sorry, not select, update employees. Yeah, it's right. The first three are done, so this is up to number four. Set imp hire date equal to 2009-19, where employee ID equal four, Employee set empire date equal 2019 one employee ID. That's totally fine syntax. Oh, 
Oh, let's see if it took it. We should now have at least four employees that have higher dates or or three if that one didn't take. Why is this working at all? Oh, no, good golly. All right, so we've got the first four now have higher dates. Let's just leave those four in there and then we'll do the last of the query. And that was number six. And that said, write a query that shows the total number of days between the oldest date hired and the newest date hired. Also write an aggregate query which shows the earliest date hired, the latest date hired, the average date hired, and the number of unique hired dates. Good gravy. Okay. So the first one. For the first query. What we'll write for that one will be select max emp higher date as we'll call that oldest hire. And then the minimum empire date as we'll call that one the newest hire. And then the date difference between these. The date difference between the. Between this. And this. And we'll give that a name as well. Call it day diff. All right, so there was the oldest hire. There was the new, or I guess I got it backwards, but that's okay. All right. But what they're saying is there's 4,070 days between September 19th, 2000 and November 11th, all right, of 2011. So the only thing that's wrong here is this, this should have been called newest. They should have been called oldest. And I guess this is running every time, but for whatever reason, it's showing me the results down here. So there's the newest, there's the oldest, there's the number of days. All right. So as of right now, I have gone through six and there's a total of 13. All right. So we will come back and do the do those in about uh, come back at 10 15. We'll finish this up.
All right, then to continue on, we're on number seven here of 13. Show the altered table to add a new field to the end of the product vendors table. All right, so let's do that first. In fact, first, let's take a quick look at the product vendors table, which is right there. If I go to structure, you'll notice it has four fields, a product ID, a vendor ID, a product vendor wholesale price, and a product vendor days to deliver. We want a delivered date. Okay, so we will come in here and we will again do an alter table. The table we want to alter is product vendors. All right, and we want to add a new field that's called delivery date, and it should be of type date. And it says product vendors does not exist. Oh, because it shouldn't have an underscore there. There we go. All right, and it says return zero rows. Uh, the, the green check mark means that it worked. So now if I go to structure, you'll notice there's a new field over there, delivery date. All right, so that's the first part. Then we're supposed to show the query to fill the expected delivery date. So what we want to do is we want to add. All right, we want to add to the current date. In fact, let's let's do this. Let's see once. Let's look at this. So let's uh, select star from product. Let's see what do we have here. Because this is going to look really funky when I go to orders here. There's the order date and the order ship date to see that. And it's going to look funky because it's three years between 2019 and 2022, but that's OK. Let's just run it the way we've got it. It's fine. So I'm going to say select. Product number. As. In fact, I should check on these fields because I I've done so much with this table over the years or these this database over the years. So yeah, I'll get out of there. Let's go to products. So product vendors has got product ID. See, there is no product number in here, and that's what I'd had. So product ID, vendor ID, product vendor wholesale price, product vendor days to deliver, and our new delivery date. All right, so the, like I said, we're going to get some astronomical numbers in here, but just so you can see it, this will say now, select product ID as Product, we're going to just call it product number, even though technically it's not. Uh, vendor ID. Wholesale price. In fact, I think that wasn't called that anymore. It's product vendor wholesale price. as wholesale price and product vendor days to deliver as days to deliver. And then finally, date add. So I want to add current date
Huh. Like I said, we could get some really weird, weird looking numbers in here. They could be negative or they could be really big. It's totally fine. All right. So the days to deliver, I guess they're shown in here. All right. And they're not real funky. Okay. Well, that's good. I guess what it did was it added the number of days. Okay, that we were supposed to be getting. So notice these are all six days from today. Actually, it's the 11th, but you get the idea. Seven would be etc. So it does look like it's working. All right. Then number eight. Show the query to fill the expected delivery date by adding the delivery date amount to the current date. Kind of just did that. All right, so we don't need to do that. All right, I want to run through just a couple more of these because what is going to end up happening in here is you're going to end up doing table joins. You've seen one already, but the reason that's so important is I am going to ask for the last part of this assignment for the Garth Brooks database project. I'm going to ask you to add a new table and for you to do a table join. All right, so. Let's start, just jump up to number nine here. Show a query that provides the product name, the quantity ordered, the retail price, and the wholesale price. All right, so in other words, this is getting information from three different tables. All right. You're not going to do anything that hard. You're only going to have to join together two tables. In fact, let's let's forget all of these. Let's forget every one of these. And let's look in here and let's join together two tables so you can see what I'm talking about. OK. All right. So what I want to get here. Is as an example, I want the order number, the order date. The product number the quoted price and the quantity ordered. So I'll grab the first two things from orders and I will grab the last three things from order details and we'll join those because it has a field in common. It's probably going to be the order ID. Oh, just to show you how this is done and we'll just call it a period then. All right. So. Select. Back, let's look at this. Let's look at orders. This is God. Order ID, order date and ship date. We'll grab these three things. Order ID, order date and ship date. And then from order details. We'll grab order detail quoted price and order detail quantity ordered. So you can see the combining and order ID is the one that's in both. <coughs> so this is order ID, order date, and order ship date and i also want in here then the uh, order details dot quoted price and the order details dot quantity ordered okay now these names stink OK, let's let's change this. So we'll say as. Order number. <laughs> we'll change this. To. As. Order date. How about date ordered? We'll change this one to date shipped.
We'll change this one to quoted price. Finally, we'll change this one to quantity ordered. All right. Now there's two ways we can write this. We can say from, and since that's a keyword, I'll capitalize it, orders, okay. And then we can tell it to join, which is totally fine. All right, I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. So I'm gonna say from orders, order details where orders dot order id equals order details dot order id all right so this is the old fangled way of doing it but this is the way i learned how back when i was your age all right so let me grab this What does it like? Column order ID is ambiguous. OK. So it says the order ID is in both of these. So let's say orders. Dot order ID. We'll come back and take a look at all of this in a minute. So we have now grabbed information from two different tables. All right, we grabbed from the orders table, the order number, the date ordered, and the date shipped. And from the order details table, we grab the quoted price and the quantity ordered. All right, how did we do that? Now, this was ambiguous because this field exists in both tables. See that there's an order ID in the orders table and there's an order ID in the order details table. So I had to tell it which one to use. It wouldn't matter which one I picked. So we asked for the order ID that we renamed order number. We can just call this ID. Doesn't matter like that. We've got the order date, which we call date ordered. The ship date, which we call date shipped the quoted price, which we called quoted price, and the quantity ordered. Just to show you, we'll change this just so you can see. We'll change that to QTY. And let's see. I'm gonna say from orders, I'm gonna do it the other way. I'm gonna say inner join, Order details on orders dot order ID equals order details dot dot order ID. Let's see if I did that without screwing it up. And there's the same information. Now, hopefully, one thing, because this is all I'm going to do today is if you look at this we talk about why this might be a little bit easier all right doesn't like something we did in here oh it's got that get rid of that there we go all right let's make this o right and we'll keep these all the way they are but i'm going to make these o d here and here. In fact, here we'll put O dot, even though we don't have to. So O dot and O dot. This is why you come in here and you alias. So orders is now O, order details is now OD. And I can use them even before I've aliased them. Make that a little O just to be consistent little O and little O on O dot this equals O D. It's a little bit slim down. 
All right. Now it should still work. Everything should be still running the same. And we get the same information. So what I have done in these in this last hour or so is I've gone through this first example. What I plan on doing tomorrow. All right, what I plan on doing tomorrow, I may end up giving you um, on. Uh, we'll just use this. That's fine. Is I'm going to jump or go over, I should say. Numbers one and two here from these SQL worksheets. So number one has got 17 queries. And number two has got. Number one with 17 queries. And number two has got 12 queries. We'll go through both of those tomorrow. And that should take, I would guess, till about 10 o'clock. Then on Wednesday, we're going to do two things. We're going to go over the third worksheet, which is very complex. All right. And we're going to go over um, what I want, the other, the other change I want you to make to the database project. All right. Sorry if I sound a little scatterbrained. All right. And hopefully it'll, I'll feel a little bit better tomorrow. Talk to you then. Thanks.